Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to the glorious Africam show brought to you by explore.org. My name is Russell Gerber and welcome back. Back with you all for another half an hour of a great pleasure to have you with us if you have anything on your mind if you want to say hi or ask us some questions about the things you've seen on the cameras or any of the animals we might encounter this afternoon please do send those questions through we always love hearing from you kicking off the show of course with our wonderful Monty Python who for those of you who are following been busy again slowly decreasing the population of avian species in the area around Rosie's back on his favorite basking and hunting spot where just recently we saw him take out a hornbill and I'm pretty sure it was a red-billed hornbill if I remember correctly which I think thus far has been the biggest bird species we've seen him take out thus far Monty. But this little branch is still holding or giving huge success to our friendly neighborhood python. Maybe not so friendly to the birds. But uh, as we've discussed in the past, what a great location for him or her. We're not sure if it's a male or a female. Let me know what your thoughts are out there, if you have any ideas. Sure, we've got some snake specialists out there. What do we call a snake specialist? A herpetologist, I think. And as far as I know, the only way to really sex a snake like this is to get really up close and personal. Often with the ventral scales, you can tell. But as for Monty, not sure if it's a boy or a girl. Doesn't matter really. Equally exciting. And I think we've got to give some quick hellos this morning. Stephanie straight out the blocks with a good morning from Virginia. Hello, Stephanie. And who else is out there? Laura Reed. Thanks for joining us, Laura. Tammy, hello. Hello. Thank you for your greeting. OMG23 from the famous Kalamazoo. Back again with us. And Sicko watching the show as well. Hi, Sicko. Nice to have you back. Andy, welcome. And Christine from Western New York, welcome. And Betty asks, I wonder where Monty was before he or she returned to the branch. Yeah, I'm not sure, Betty. Giving the bird some space for a while, perhaps to throw them off his scent or location but uh, of course all the predators move around to try to keep themselves as cryptic as possible but nice to have Monty back again in our favorite spot where we can see all the action but as we've crossed over to our Black Eagle cam 
you can see we have some action around the nest, which is very exciting. Now, many of you will know they used to be called black eagles. They are now, now of course, known as Varose eagles. And we often see them in very mountainous country like this. Of course, this camera on the other side of the gorge <laughs> with an incredible zoom going all the way through to give us these amazing shots. And you can see we're zoomed in so far, we're getting a little bit of distortion almost on the camera from the heat. I'm not sure if we have both male and female here at the moment. I'm pretty sure we just had the one. But as you can see, even though it's in the shadows, pretty clear why they used to be called black eagles. But very easy to identify in terms of the eagles. There's nothing really else like them in this area, southern Africa. But almost always you'll find them in pairs, breeding pairs. For the most part they will breed for life, as many bird species do. Kathy Barton, hello, good to see you again too, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for starting the show with a bad pun. Kathy, that is literally the sum total of my sense of humor. As a new father of now two, it is my great pleasure to bring the world as many dad jokes as possible. And that was my late afternoon for me, early morning effort for you. Who else? Gemma. Good day, Russell and fellow African fans from New Jersey. Thanks for joining us, Gemma. Carol says the camouflage is amazing. I assume talking about Monty. Well, Black Eagle's not quite as camouflaged. They don't really have to be the way that they hunt. They tend to go for well, the most common prey species. As you have a look here, how far out we actually are from that nest site and the incredible zoom on our camera. The rose eagles are very fond of hyraxes, rock hyrax, or what we know as a dussy in southern Africa. So go have a look at what a dussy looks like. Very interesting little creature, tailless. One of the interesting things about it is it has quite a close evolutionary ancestor incredibly to the elephant so go look that up it is pretty remarkable considering how different they look john tells me that monty took out two hornbills in a row that's awesome i didn't know that john i only saw the one so that's very exciting so you never know anything that lands near old monty as we watch, could be engorged by this gorgeous snake. And Angel asks, do pythons get bigger in the wild or in captivity? Very good question, Angel. I, I don't know for sure. My experience tells me that with the consistent access to food and much less energy required to get food in captivity, if they are correctly cared for, of course, is that they would get probably bigger in captivity. Most species do. But uh, that is an educated guess, but a guess nonetheless. Remembering that in the wild, 
a southern African python like this. You know, Monty is certainly not the biggest. Probably is still still a few more feet potentially to grow. You know, with a big male snake like this, can we up to forty five kilograms or so? But like many of the reptiles, as they of course must lay eggs when the time comes for breeding. Females are a little bit bigger and often come in at around 55 kilograms or so. It's about 10 kilograms more. And what is that? About 130 pounds or so. And reaching around five meters in length, which is around 15 feet, I'd say, for our American viewers. So, yeah, Monty can still get bigger, that's for sure. You hear a woodpecker in the background there. So, yeah, I think Monty. Probably got a few more years to go if he keeps doing as well as he is, or she is, with this location and all the food we've seen her getting. Well, likely to get much bigger. And uh, Mickey Coburn Monroe says hello. I think this is as up close and personal as I would like to get to that snake. Agreed, Mickey. When I was a young safari guide, trying to show off my skills with uh, far less sense than I do have these days, I attempted to handle a young African rock python, as he used to be called, now southern African python, who swiftly turned around and bit me on the hand. And I can tell you it was rather unpleasant. They are, of course, a non-venomous snake species. You live and you learn. That was before I qualified as a safari guide. So not my most proud moment <laughs> in my career, but uh, you live and you learn. Snake handling is a very much specialized skill so I must say for myself with Monty I don't think I'd be too keen to attempt to handle him of course in the wild with guests and out on safari in the reserves particularly these days if you consider I started guide training around gee almost 20 years ago now well, these days the handling of any animals is frowned upon, so we try to give as much space to them as possible. Thank you for all your questions and comments. You can actually see old Monty giving a little tongue flick out there. Of course, one of the major sensory systems. Oh, this snake. And essentially that tongue of course helps them to collect essentially chemicals from the air or the ground. And that flicking of the tongue, of course, is just to get as much of those potential little chemicals onto that organ. Give them as much opportunity as possible.
But uh, the tongue itself, in case you're wondering, doesn't actually have any sensory organs or receptors on its on the tongue itself. Those receptors for snakes are actually in an area known as the Jacobson's organ, or the vomeronasal organ, which is in the roof of the mouth. So as the tongue flicks out and picks up those chemicals, goes back into the mouth and those chemicals evoke different signals that of course get relayed to the brain and that helps the snake decipher information around its surroundings. But a remarkable organ, and as you can see, Monty showing his or her usual incredible levels of patience, waiting for a, for a meal. And Betty asks, how often does the snake need to eat? Betty depends on many things for reptiles in particular, of how often they need to eat. Depends on how cold or warm it is, depends on how big the previous meal was, depends on the size of the snake. But uh, I've heard all sorts of things that snakes can go a couple of weeks, sometimes months without feeding if they get a big enough meal. Oh, look at that. Look at that. On camera. Thank you for that, Monty. Appreciate the effort. What has he got there? <laughs> that was so quick. Amazing. Well, there we go. One less bird in the area. <laughs> Just trying to see. My producer thinks he missed. I think she might be right. Just having a look here. It might have just been feathers. It's amazing how quick he is. Let's see. Oh. And there's another hornbill. <laughs> oh my god, there's way too much action. No, it looks like it really was just the tail. It took a huge piece of the tail feathers so that put poor bird is now going to have some difficulty flying if it could fly at all it may not survive but just looking at it, it does look like it's just the tail feathers and sorry it's difficult to get him in focus with all of the moving leaves around. How cool is that? Live on camera, on the show. The potential demise of another bird species. I'm not sure what it was before you ask me. And Tammy asks, are those lumps in his body food is he is digesting? Tammy, at the moment, I don't think so. I think it's just the different angles of the body as it goes up this uneven branch. It looks like lumps. But yes, absolutely, when they do eat something, it will present as a large lump in the body until it is digested. So what do you think? You all saw it with me? Do you think he got the bird or do you think that's just a big wad of tail feathers in his mouth? 
I tend to agree with my producer. I think it's just a wad of tail feathers. As I said, I'm not sure what... He'll give us a clue, though. If he does, of course, spit it all out, then we'll know it was just, <laughs> just feathers. Yeah, I wonder if it wasn't one of our. I wonder if it wasn't one of our dove species. We'll, we'll pop back over in just a second. But wow is right. A few of you shouting out wow out there. That was unbelievable. How cool was that during the show? Any time, really. But this is the glory of safari. You know, anything can happen at any time as long as you have the patience to watch. And... Uh, you know, if you can't spend the time in one location, which we're so fortunate to have. Cameras in these beautiful wild locations. Yeah, it looks like our feathers are just that, feathers. The bird got away. John reckons, yeah, the bird got away. Uh, OMG also reckons it's just feathers. That was awesome, though. <laughs> Suzanne says that was awesome. It was pretty special. But he missed. Very lucky bird. I think it was one of our dove species. Maybe Cape Turtle or Laughing Dove. But, uh, yeah, it can all happen so fast. So I suspect shortly we'll see old Monty spit those feathers out. And Stephanie asks, can a bird fly without tail feathers? Stephanie, I would imagine very poorly. Uh, of course, the tail feathers are utilized for all sorts of things in flight, particularly directional change. And of course, even when landing, it helps to give them increased balance as well. So I think this bird would have great difficulty flying without tail feathers at all. Unfortunately, also, in many cases, a large amount of feathers like that, particularly tail feathers, will not grow back. So it could easily, sadly, folks, be a fatal injury to whatever bird that was. What an incredible moment, though. It all depends on how much damage, as I said, was done. It was quite a lot of feathers that came out there, so we'll have to see what happens. But I suspect that poor bird is not in a good way right now. What have we got out here? Gwyn reckons female pythons have shorter tails relative to length of body than the males do. Of course, this helps to have it helps to have a male and female side by side. But Monty does seem to have a short tail, so perhaps female. Indeed, very good point, Gwyn. But uh, yeah, I think. It, could still be either. I'm not 100% sure. We're just losing a little bit of picture there, folks. So we'll come back in a minute. We've crossed over to 
tau. Kathy says, I hope it was just the feathers. I would hate it if the bird was injured and die a slow death. I uh, know, Kathy, it's very sad. But this is the nature of safari, of course, and African life in the bush. And uh, Rolling Trouble says the bird is now rissing his rear. Not a fan of snakes, but Monty is fun to watch. He is. Very, very interesting and exciting. I mean, as I said, to just capture that on camera as we're all enjoying the bush together is really quite special. And we'll pop over there in just a few minutes. We've come back to our black eagles. So it looks like we've got one of our adults actually sitting in the nest. Which is incredible to see. We've had a lot of good action today. I know the eagles haven't been around much at the nest, certainly not when we're doing the show, so lovely to have one about for now. Be very exciting to see what happens here in the future with our little black eagle family. So stay with us. see what happens with our eagles. I do love this particular eagle species. If you, you will see them in all their glory, standing on the edge of the nest, especially when they're coming back from a hunt or gathering materials for the nest. But they really are one of the most beautiful eagle species. I must say Monty would have some trouble taking on a black eagle or a rose eagle. But if he caught him in the right place, even an eagle could become a meal for a python. But in this particular case, it could also go the other way. Many snake species become the victims of big eagles. So it would be completely about who was caught more unawares. Bearing in mind, we were talking about pythons being around 50 kilograms. Black eagle, only around 4 or 5 kilograms maximum. But they have the great advantage of extremely sharp talons and beak. But as I mentioned earlier, snakes not really a big preferred meal for black eagles. But let's pop over back to old Monty. He looks like he's spat out his feathers. Stephanie says, I'm not a bird person, but Monty's tail feathers come from, came from a gray bird with darker tail feathers and orange reddish wings. Hmm. Yeah, I still think it could be one of our dove species, Stephanie. I'll have to go back and see what what everything looked like. <laughs> Monty's still holding on to these feathers though, in the hope that perhaps there's a bird on the end of them. I do not think he's, or well, she is quite aware. <laughs> there's not much to be had there yet. Spit it out, Monty. Well, what a wonderful bit of luck on the show, everyone. And I'm so glad you were all here to enjoy that with, with us. Really great to interact with all of you and chat about this incredible and beautiful python. 
And unfortunately, we've run out of time as we watch Monty try and deal with these feathers. But uh, thank you so much once again for joining us. We'll be back again same time next week for the AfriCam show brought to you by explore.org. My name's Russell Gerber, and I'll be back next week with all of you. We hopefully we get some more action like this on the show. But until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your time with Monty and all of our beautiful cameras. And from all of us here in the AfriCam team, we'll see you next week. Cheers for now.